it's still uh, exactly right. You know, nothing really, nothing went wrong. Did exactly as it was supposed to do. Um, the only thing that kind of weirded me out a little bit was when it's off, disengaged, I suppose. It's very kind of rattly and sits and kind of jangles about a little bit. Um, but that's really only an issue until you lock it up and then it's just solid. It's like it's one piece of steel when you've got it closed up. Which is slick. Um, yeah, some of the things that Josh was saying he liked about, or he adjusted in it, was the ability to kind of adjust it when it's engaged. Adjust the snare wires while it's engaged. Um, it's very indexy, you know what I mean? Like it takes along as it goes around, which is very slick. Um, I like that. It does do the job. It is still, like most throws, much easier to adjust when it's disengaged, obviously. Um, yeah, it's very cool. There is the, the little bolts that hold it in there. If you lose a washer and it falls out and the you know thing falls out or who knows how you could do that, but it's not really made of parts that you can just go and find at any old hardware store. You know what I mean? They're a bit too proprietary, sort of. The bolt itself is definitely a nod towards uh, um, Ray's drumsmith um, throw that he then brought over to Ty, um, in that it's carriage bolty at the top, and you know, that's always fun. I do like the length of the lever. It's very big. You don't have to go and look for the damn thing. It's just there. You know what I mean? Um, when you're playing the gig and you know you're counting it off and you realize that you didn't re-engage your snare, you're like, oh crap. You know, you can get to it quite quickly. Love that. I mentioned earlier there the screws for this one that uh, the bolts rather that mounted to the shell are very reminiscent of the drumsmith one that Ray Ayotte designed and that is in that they they just kind of go anywhere in this slot right and they uh, so you can kind of retrofit just about anything with it disadvantage of this one of course is that if you've got a shell with a bead, you're kind of out of luck. Unlike with this one, where it's split, you can actually get it over that. Um, this isn't, you know, by any means the only one where you can get over the, the center bead. Um, Ron Donette makes, you know, some pretty slick ones as well. The R4L fits over the, the bead is, um, yeah. But it, it's very slick in this one. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's it's cool to see people taking slick little ideas like like this um, slot and carriage bolt system and adapting it to something else. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if that was a direct correlation or or not, but yeah, slick nonetheless. Another thing I should mention, um, the bolts that come with it, that hold the uh, throw to the shell, they, uh, they're they pretty long, but if you're, do if you're doing one of these ridiculously thick, like 30, 40 ply shells, they're just super thick shells, it might not be long enough and it could be a bit of a pain to find... Um, Kind of carriage bolts, I guess. I guess they they would be that would that have that head um, that would fit in that slot, right? That could be a downside. But if that's the only downside I can really think of, 
that's pretty good. So yeah, um, all things considered, this snare throw is a fantastic piece of kit. Um, I really dig it. I uh, hope to use many more of them on my uh, custom snares, um, as well as any refits that I do that need a new snare, you know. Um, they're lightweight, they're super solid, the uh, length of the arm is fantastic, the size of the uh, adjustment knob is very very big, you know, compared to the size of the actual kind of barrel of the throw itself. Um, yeah, just everything about this thing is fantastic. It's so good. Uh, Josh, you nailed it 100%. Um, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it does it efficiently and conveniently. So, uh, yeah, this thing's definitely a hit for me.